famous black female rapper Little Kim recently came out with these Instagram photos of her looking remarkably white. And her new Caucasian look caused all sorts of critiques about skin bleaching on the internet. But is skin bleaching really so bad for you? Now, Little Kim's body image issues are no secret. In a 2000 interview, she said, I have low self-esteem and I always have. Guys always cheated on me with other women who were European looking. You know, the long hair type. Really beautiful women that left me thinking, how can I compete with that? Being a regular black girl wasn't good enough. Now, it really sucks that little Kim feels this way because A, black is beautiful and all skin colors are beautiful, and B, dudes are gonna cheat on girls anyway. It's evolutionary biology 101. But the phenomena of skin bleaching is happening for two reasons. One, unrealistic beauty expectations put on women. That's the economy inspiring us to be something different than what we are so that they can sell us shit. And two, in America especially, it also has its roots planted firmly in racial inequality. As Cenk put it in this Young Turks piece. There is a history of racism in this country that has to be recognized. You think it, did, it didn't affect our culture at all? That if you were black, you were a slave and couldn't be free? Right? That people who were light-skinned had enormous, enormous, unbelievable advantages over people who were not. I mean, See, the thing is, both black and white women, and every color in between, are taught to want the opposite of what they are. As much as I'm not overly proud to admit this on camera, Beck and I are always trying to make ourselves look more tanned, and it's become the dominant aesthetic preference. I actually won't go on camera without fake tan on my face. Otherwise, I look like this, and Beck tells me, look all pasty. Kind of like Renee Russo in The Outbreak, you know where she stabs herself with that Ebola needle and she gets really sick. But tanning creams approved by the FDA are not the worst of it. People go to more extreme lengths than self-tanner, like the people who inject illegal skin darkening substance Melaton 2, dubbed the Barbie drug sometimes with horrific side effects. But skin whitening is what we're talking about here. A recent study by the University of Cape Town suggests that skin whitening is extremely common. One in three women of color bleaches their skin, particularly in Africa and Asia. And with good reason, being light-skinned has financial benefits. Studies repeatedly show that light-skinned people make more money and enjoy more success. For example, a 2007 study found that lighter skinned immigrants in the US earned 8 to 15% more than their dark skinned counterparts. So given the huge incentives to be lighter skinned, it's a good idea to bleach your skin, right? Well, extensive research shows that skin bleaching is not safe, with adverse effects from itching, burning skin to scales and cancer. The main chemical used to stop the skin from producing melanin is hydroquinine. Research commissioned by the FDA found that hydroquinine may trigger blood cancers such as leukemia, cancers of the liver and kidneys, as well as a severe skin condition called otrinosis, a form of hyperpigmentation which causes the skin to turn a dark purple shade. It's so dangerous that most countries, including Japan, Australia and the European Union, have banned hydroquinine. But somehow, it's still legal in the US. Little Kim is not to blame here. Society's unfair standards in terms of race, class, and beauty are at fault. So what can we do? Let's try as hard as we can to reinforce at all times the fact that women of all colors are beautiful. But what do you guys think? Have you ever wanted to alter your skin color? And why? Let us know in the comments below. Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching SciQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.